Okay, so tonight we have Miss Tanya at 3 o'clock in the morning. I appreciate you coming and helping me out. No problem. Miss Tanya, help me out. This means a lot. Um, how are you doing today? You good? Take your time. Uh, you good? Doing good. Doing good. That's good. Um, my first question for you is, what is your zodiac sign? A Gemini. What do they What do they say about Gemini? <laughs> uh, split personalities. That's, That's cool. the most that I've heard. I don't really look up on it too much. That's they cool. say uh, hard worker. They they hard working. They grind. Selfless, but most likely they say split personalities. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. What's your favorite color? Purple. What's your favorite number? Seven. <clears throat> What's your five favorite foods? Um, fettuccine, um, pizza, stuffed chicken, cereal, and uh, macaroni. That stuffed chicken, nobody said that yet. That hit, people say regular chicken, but that stuffed chicken, where is that? Oh, oh for sure. sure. What you say? You, you get full off that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Quick. All right, what's your five favorite restaurants, Miss Tanya? Cheesecake Factory, It's Fourth mm-hmm. Street, um, P.F. Chains, um, That I like to go sit in it. See, P.F. Chains, Cheesecake Factory, 54th Street, TGF Friday. I cannot forget that. The Unlimited Appetizers. Can't forget that. No, that's right. Yes, and Red Lobster. No, I didn't even say. No, I, which one would I go first? I'm going to have to take 54th Street out and put Olive Garden and Red Lobster. Oh, no, you can put, you can say six. You can say okay. 54th Street. Okay, yeah. okay, well, I got six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are my favorite. If I have to go to a restaurant, those are the ones I choose. I'm going to pick the high-end stuff. <laughs> I know that's right. All right, so boom, Olive Garden. You like their breadsticks? Mm-hmm. Unlimited, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That bread? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I like it, too. I try to take a bag home. They let me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. But I'll be sliding sometimes. And then oh, if you dip so... it with the Alfredo sauce, when you get the yeah. um, breadsticks, yeah. something with the Alfredo sauce on the side. Yeah. Super, yeah. super rare. If you eat it raw or dry, there's something wrong with you. You need to no. put that sauce on it. You need mm-hmm. to put that sauce on it. You messing up. <laughs> exactly. That's why I eat it for the sauce. <laughs> you know, you got to swirl it on the plate. For real. You the bread. All right, so... Miss Tanya, um, what five countries would you like to visit? Fiji, for one, I would love to go to, um, um, New Zealand. I seen so many pictures of that; it's so beautiful. I think that's so pretty. Um, uh, Punta Cana would definitely be one place that would be on my bucket list. Um. I haven't really thought about too many places like that, but I do know. It's like Bora Bora. Is that one of them? Mm-hmm. You ain't that's... say it yet, but that's the place. Yeah. Okay. Place. And then the other one, um, what is it called? Los, what is it called? Starts with an L. Um, Where is that? It's on an island somewhere. It starts with an L. I ain't, I'm I'm not having a brain for it, but I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. I can't. It's, cool. it's like it's low cool. something, L O S, and I always forget the second part because the girl that I follow, she goes there all the time. It's so pretty. It's a is it in the U S. or somewhere else? Oh, it's out of the U S. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't worry about it. I think I figured out. For sure. For sure. All right. So boom. <clears throat> uh, would you rather go into space or deep sea diving? Space. <laughs> something ha- I don't, <laughs> something can happen, but you know what though? I, nobody's ever asked me that because something, anything can happen in the water. Though the core can get struck, but anything can happen in space too. I'm gonna yeah. say space though. I would love to see those stars and just look at all that up close. I hate to see what's in that water. Me too. 
All right, so <clears throat> if someone came to you in space, do you think you'd be afraid if it was friendly, if it seemed friendly, or you'd be like, would you embrace it? I would embrace it. That's good. That's good. All right, boom. What's your uh, <clears throat> What's your favorite animals? You can do five, you can do ten, whatever animals you like. What's favorite animal animals, animals, most definitely, I would have to say a uh, um, monkey, like a chimpanzee. That is my number one. It's just, I feel like they like got so many human characteristics. Like, I don't know, it's just something about uh, a monkey or a chimpanzee that just makes me cry. I do. I love, I love, I love them. Of course, everybody knows a dog and a cat, but monkeys are my number one. Chimpanzees are my number one. I do love, um, like if I have to go to the zoo, I love to sit and watch the polar bear and what they do in the water. I love to look at, um, I love a giraffe, elephants, and I like a horse. I love horses. Just to watch it, I just like to see them run. Yep. That's cool. I like the giraffe's tongue. Some of them be purple. Mm -hmm. I like those. <clears throat> um... Do you have any pets? No. Have you ever had any pets? Mm-hmm. What kind of pets have you had? I've had a fish, of course. I've had a Maltese, a Ch dog, Chinese child, Maltese, Rockwiler, stuff like that. But nothing. Else. And a cat. I had a cat, and I missed the cat. <laughs> oh, man. What is your cat name? Simba. Simba. Boy, that's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. I had, um, we had a cat and a dog at the same time. But Simba, when we moved, she always ran the neighborhood. And when we left, she just stayed gone. So I think she knew we was moving and didn't want to come with us. For real. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Before COVID hit, nope. Next question. What's your five favorite drinks? I love a strawberry daiquiri, like a virgin, pina colada, um, strawberry lemonade. Um, if I have to have, um, water, I, I, I'm not going to be honest. Water is my, my number one. Mm -hmm. I do love, I do love a cherry Coke mm -hmm. and a root beer. That's cool. Where you, where you from? Do y'all have like city water or do y'all have well water? Like is well water a thing where you at or no? Um, I don't think so. We got city water. I buy water bottles. There's too much going on with the water now. For real, I either boil it, put it through a filter. For real, by the time they let y'all know, like, hey, you gotta boil your water, something in it, it's too late. Y'all done, it's done been a week. That's yeah. how I feel about it. But I don't know. We, I'm, we lucky down here. A lot of people got well water, but people, some people do have city water, especially like restaurants. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so boom, Miss Tanya. My next question is: Before COVID hit, uh, did you like to go shopping? Yeah. <laughs> Would you rather go? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Once, not no. So I'm mean, gonna go to the mall every now and then, but it's always the Ross. <laughs> oh yeah, that's my my stores: Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Dollar Tree. That's and all Bur I need. Yeah, and Burlington. Can't oh, yeah, forget Bur Burlington. Burlington, Burlington. But it's far from you. We take, but we go to Burlington. We go on a that's like a mini vacation. Yeah, <laughs> it's like three hours. Oh, but yeah, yeah, we go sometime. We go sometime. All right, so. <laughs> Boom, Miss Tanya. My next question is: Would you rather go online shopping or shopping in the stores? Shopping in the stores. What's your five favorite stores to go shopping at? Ross, Burlington, Marshalls, Walmart. Um, let's say Ross, Burlington. Oh, Home Goods. Yeah. Ooh, no. do y'all have Ollie's where you are? Mm mm. It's like, it's like a, all right, we have it here, they is new though, it's like a, I don't know, do you have a rugged warehouse? Mm-mm. Mm, -mm. Mm rugged warehouse not that good, but Ollie's, it's like a, it's like a Walmart without groceries, but it's mm. all reduced. Oh my God, like, that would be heaven on earth. It's like, all right, so it's like Ross, but it's different, it's, it's like Ross, it's like Ross, it's like Ross, it's like Ross. It's like Ross. Oh, but it's everything you see got a price on it, and then they got an Ollie sticker on it. Every everything, the Ollie sticker, red, it stand out. It's always lower by oh, seven eight dollars. <laughs> For real, mm. but but it's like That's stuff. Like 
the stuff's so unprofessional in there. It's like they got stuff scattered everywhere. So you got to stay in there two, three, four hours just to get exactly everything you need. But it's worth it at the end of the day because you might end up, you might go to Walmart and spend a thousand. You might go to Ollie spend three fifty. <laughs> like, but you know what? If my kids are with me, I can stay in the store about four or five hours just to take my time because you got to make sure you have. Because that's everything. the thing about grocery shopping. I take my time. So going to Ollie's, that would be like heaven on earth for me. For real. I feel you. When you go shopping, do you just go off your head or do you write stuff down? Both. That's how I'm supposed to do. That's good. That's good. You write everything down. You're like, oh, I forgot this. I forgot mm-hmm. this. I feel you. <clears throat> All right, so boom. It's time. My next question is, when you went to school, what were your favorite subjects? I believe reading was one. Science and social studies, most definitely. What were your least favorite subjects? Math, for sure. I um, math. <laughs> it's my least favorite too. Um, <clears throat> what were your three favorite school lunches? Oh my God, the cheese Bosco sticks. It's like bread sticks, but it's I know what Bosco sticks is. Man, yeah. it's like something about the cheese with the bread with the marinara sauce. Mm-hmm. The Bosco sticks. Um, we used to have like taco salad, and it's like the one with the cup. They used to have to put all the um, top, you know, toppings inside the uh, tortilla bowl. That was my second favorite, and then the other one was just like the chicken sandwiches. It used to come like in the foil, so it's the chicken sandwich with lettuce. Mm, hot, it's gonna come hot too. Yeah, I, I like them. I just, oh, I, I, I said, I told you earlier about the Bosco stick. I just found out about them. I ain't gonna lie to you. Ooh. I just interviewed a woman from Chicago. Uh, she's like, she's, I believe she's, she's over twenty five. I know that. Um, and she said Bosco sticks. Now I looked them up, and yeah, I know what they are now, but I didn't know what they were before. <clears throat> oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So my next question is. What are your plans for the next five years? Um, um before, next, before you start, I'm going to ask you again. The next question will be, what, what are your plans for the next 10 years? Just to give you an understanding. Ooh, next 10 years? Um, You said, what are my goals? Mm-hmm. No, what was the question again? What are your plans? What are your goals? Same thing. Same thing. Um, the plans for the next 10 years is, to me, is just being the best me that I can be. And making sure I got myself in a better position for my kids, for my husband. So definitely doing something to where it'll be a benefit to my younger kids to pass down. And it'll be something for me later on to be um, be a little bit more comfortable. So striving to do something better than what I'm doing now. Definitely. I really want to travel too. Next two years, I want to be able to just be like so and financially freedom and have debt paid off and stuff pay off to where I could just say let me take my kids on a trip let me do this let me do that like that's kind of what I want to do well this sounds crazy but I feel like a lot of people have like their ages of 18 to 30 a lot of people like mess up their credit by accident and then they stuck with them for the rest of their life I feel like if you were a citizen in this country Every ten years, you get a hundred thousand. That's what the go. I feel like that's what the government should do. Get everybody a hundred thousand. If you make it ten years on earth, you get it. Well, they got the money it. too. Like they got it. So yeah, right. It's just getting burned on everything else. Ain't they burning it? Like when they switch over currency, you burning it anyway. You destroying it, or it's just sitting somewhere in a locked up room, just money stacked somewhere. Like all this money that they get for the lottery. Just think if y'all gave people a second chance with the money that y'all making us win for the lottery. For real. 2.5 million, billion, trillion, 500. Do you know what you, you can give everybody, what, 500,000, 100,000 each citizen? Like, it can be done. Straight up. And on top of that, any student who goes to college, if they graduate, they shouldn't have to pay on no loans. It should be oh. free. That's a reward for graduating. You don't get nothing else up a, a piece of paper that say, here, I'm certified in this. 
You might as well cancel out my debt. And it's not even just that. Because when you come out of school, the first thing they say is they want you to have experience. They want you to have this, but I just got out of school. So where's my experience coming in? That's why I'm applying for a job. So a lot of times you see so many people with these degrees um, can't even get a job in a degree they in. So they go working for somewhere else and go back to school for another trade. So that extra incentive would be great, especially for people coming out of college. Straight up. <clears throat> my next question is do you have any special talents Mm-mm. it's cool it's cool can you sing Mm-mm. can you sing can you sing can you draw no can you draw? can't either oh can you play any instruments Mm-mm. I can't either we in the same boat no <clears throat> hey you I- a mother are you a mother uh-huh. yeah that's a talent right there <laughs> I'm a mom of three Promise you, I ain't got no kids. Mm-hmm. That's a talent. Oh, that's thank a you. Yeah, multitasking. That's my talent. That's one of the hardest talents out here, and the longest talents. Where <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you gonna be a mother all your life? That's, that's true. For real, like that's a long term talent right there. It's like a tattoo. I ain't going um, nowhere. <laughs> all right, so. My next, I have like 10 more questions left for you. These okay. are going to be a little bit more serious. Okay. Um, my first one is, what would you like to tell the girls of the future who are 20 years and younger? Um, The best thing I can tell for somebody 20 years and younger is to follow the beat of your own drum. Do not try to be a comedian and adapt to, try to adapt to your surroundings. So if this person is doing this, don't adapt yourself to what they're doing. Always be your own um, and and not trying to prove yourself because you'll lose yourself in your identity trying to be what other people want you to be or try to be like the next person. <clears throat> what is your message for the women of the future 20 years and older? To not just waste time. 20 years and older time flies by the older you get it's like once you're out of school it's like the years the months speed on so i would most definitely to say do something that your future you will be happy you done in the prime of being 20 and up you can travel see the world but don't focus more about the name brand and the high end and focus more about financial security for when you may want to travel or may when you get to the retirement age, like you have to think about that stuff now. And I would definitely say do something that your future you will be will be really happy happy with. Like establishing a build a business, um, working on multiple streams of income, setting your kids up for for some you know, potential generational wealth. So I would definitely say that. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, what would you like to tell yourself, your future self, 20 years from now? Oh, wow. Uh, 20 years from now, I would tell myself, <laughs> ooh, I would tell future self that you lived, I would tell myself to continue to enjoy life and to, to, to push self first. Like, it's okay to still think about others, but I will tell future self to continue to live life for you and basically not for what, um, and, you know, take time for self because I just, like we talked about before we started the interview, my schedule. So I will tell future self to make sure you always think about self and it's not selfish. For real. That's a good answer. <clears throat> What would you tell your husband 20 years from now? 20 years from now has been the best, I'll say, 30 years of my life. Because we've been 10 years, we've been married for eight, be nine years next year. So it's been the best ride. <laughs> Can you, uh, would you like to tell how he proposed to you? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> it's funny. It's, it's, we were, we were in the house. It was just me and him. And, that's that, I'm sorry to cut you off. That's smooth. That's smooth. Yeah. That's how you do it. That's yeah. how you do it right 
No, nah, for sure. It was, <clears throat> it was truly authentic. It wasn't like, you know, cause I'm, like it's good. To, I think I love when I see people have a public engagement. I love that. But um, some things I think should just be intimate and, you know, to enjoy. Like sharing the news, you know, is big. But we were, I was getting ready to go to work. And we were just um, talking, hanging out. We were just, you know, laid back <clears> chilling. <throat> and when we got back from the house, we went to go see his sister. Um, we visited them for a little bit. When we got back, he was just like, got on his knees like, I want to marry you. And I was like, okay. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was perfect. It was perfect. Just me and him. I won't ever forget it. That's cool. That's cool. I hope I get married one day. I'm gonna propose. I'm I'm man, look, I'm getting on my knees. I'm telling you. Yeah, if, he went, if my knees bad, I'm gonna get me a pillow if I had to. Oh, you so watch. sweet. I'm telling you. That's, I'm gonna get on my knee, dog girl. You don't know I'm for real. I love yeah. that. But yeah, it's, it might not happen though. <clears throat> Some of these girls, I love them to death. They gotta stop being so fast. Yeah, That's they're not even just that. They they offer materialistic things and they offer validation from the internet. Like it's a whole yeah. new wave now. Like the wave yeah. now is to to be the IG model or to be viral or it's like people don't even they don't want that. And that's the best thing of life. Like as you know, like now that you're in college and you're older, time is speeding. And it's like why not not saying you girl. Like people think, oh, you gotta give up your life when you get married. That's that's when your life start really happening. Like I don't like a lot. I see a lot of people don't want kids, but I look at it like I'm so happy I have these memories with my kids to go through as I get older. I'm happy to have a husband to go through these times with. Like I wouldn't know what to do. For real. I'd probably be out here partying. I ain't gonna lie. I'd probably be out here partying, <laughs> kicking it, talking to different guys. You know what I'm saying? Just uncertainty, unsurety, like. Really. It's, it's cool thing. while you're young, but <clears throat> you don't want to be 50 years old still trying to go to the club. And there's people out here like that right now that I know at that age. That's right? why I said that. When do you want? <laughs> For real. You know, like, yeah, 50 is young, but you're 20 years from 70. Like, you, I, I don't know. Like, I know, I said, I know some people get married at 65. I know some people, but I don't want to waste that. I want to, I want to have those memories. For real. <clears throat> um. All right. So, my next question is: Cause you just we just did your future self, and we just did your husband. My next question is: Um, what would you like to tell your children twenty years from now? Twenty years from now, um, I would tell them to strive to be their best, you know, no matter what decision they make. Or whatever they do to just if they fail get back up and try it again to keep going and that the opportunities out here are endless and don't let one closed door or no make you feel defeat to not keep striving to whatever goal it is that you want to do and just keep going straight up <clears throat> what would be the dream date for you for your husband to take you out on Dream day. And, and I don't mean to cut you off, but <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Tanya Husband, you're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, a dream date for my husband to take me on. And uh, you can already tell I already had this in my mind. But mm -hmm. I would love to go sit um, either at a park or um, like in front of a body of water. With like a nice amount of pillows, with like uh, candles, um, like dessert, like a spread, like real simple on a fall day, like the beginning of fall, where you don't even need a, a jacket. Like the weather is just perfect, and you can just smell it, um, smell the breeze. Like if that makes sense, like just to sit, read a book, play a game, and. Uh, chill out by the water and to end it out would be or a horse in a carriage ride. 
Hey, dog. Mr. Tanya. I'm very, I'm very, uh, I'm very simple. Like, it don't take much. It don't take much. You don't have to do a helicopter. Well, a helicopter rides are nice, but you don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, you don't have to bust out, break your pocket. It's <clears throat> more of the thought and putting thought into it than the money. Because anybody can throw a thousand dollars and say, let's go to a lavish restaurant and, and go shopping. But it's, if when you put thought into would this make her day or I wonder if she'll like this or I'm in my mind picturing you like, oh, I want to buy this, I want to buy that. But she like, you know, it's just when I feel like you put more thought into it. That's the best for me. But yeah, that's my that's my ideal dream day. For real, hey, Mr. Tanya, man, get your pen and your pencil. You better write mm-hmm. these notes down. Oh, he already know. I, I tell him all the time. I send him pictures. I know that's right. <clears throat> you get ready. I'm, I, you, we can do it in my backyard. It don't even okay. matter. Okay. But this, it's... <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> my next question is, what is your message for the women around the world? Ooh, be united. Like, l- be in unity. Like, we have, like you said, enough um, people. Not just enough races not sticking together. We already have enough with being attacked as this anyway. But no, that's women, coming later. That's coming later. Okay, but women, we are a force when we are united. Like, what you, what you got, I may need. What she got, she need. What, like, we get so much done when we work as a unity and not as a threat to one another. Like, when we adjust each other crowns, we get a lot more further. Absolutely. <clears throat> are there any shout-outs that you would like to make to your friends and to your family? Yes, yes, yes. I would like to give a shout-out to... Whew, I just support system. I would like to give a shout out to Ashley. I would like to give a shout out to Toya, to Monique, to Nikki, to Candice. <laughs> I'm just playing family. Uh, I just, I don't really have any certain people particular. I just give a shout out to every individual who has impacted or touched my life. Um, it's just like a footprint on my heart. That's every any and everybody I come across. So I have a special shout out. I'm just being silly, but. I'll give a shout out to you for uh, allowing your girl to come on here and have this interview. <laughs> for sure. I appreciate you having me. You not having me. I appreciate having you. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> My next question is, what did your parents teach you as a child that you would like to teach your children in the future or that you try to teach your children now that you learned from your parents? Um... When my dad's deceased, he died when I was four. Um, yeah, he died when I was really young. So I really, and I have uncles and stuff like that. Like I didn't really, um, what they taught me as far as, um, um, well, mom, let me, let me, let me go back. Um, my mom, she, what I've seen and what I've learned her just to always have a hustle when it comes to working just always um not just being a lazy a lazy person you know what i'm saying uh, not hoping everything will come to you and just sitting around just making sure you're always um getting it yourself like don't wait on nobody else to give you a handout. Go get it yourself for sure. That is really important to me. But not just sitting around waiting on the government for some assistance. Not sitting around, not working, not getting up and just being about your business. Like she's always made sure you had that go getter in you to make sure you, you make it happen and don't just allow someone to say no or to <clears throat> just deal with just having less. Just go get more. For sure. <clears throat> That's a great answer. Um, what would you like people to know about you before they watch your first stream or your first YouTube video? <clears throat> um, okay. That I'm just a regular person, just like the next person. Imperfect, trying to um, figure out life as the day go by. And I got that in my bio. 
that um, like women, we all are the face of each other. Like we all carry the same same load. Like family, children, concerns. Like we all carry somewhat of the same burden. And it's not a burden; it's more of a blessing. But we all are just. I am her, and she is me. If you get that saying. <laughs> Up. It's all we united. We, mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Boom. How do you feel women are represented in the world? Um, undervalued somewhat. Um, to me, like the thing is, and I'm not trying. The world, the women right now are the leading entrepreneurs. Right now, we are. The leading entrepreneurs, but when it comes from what I hear in corporate, women are devalued for their work. Women are devalued as far as their pay. You look at Hollywood, Hollywood women, um, they get paid less than men are paid, um, especially the black women. They do not get share equal roles. Um, and when it comes to uh, auditioning, when you look at the women here, when it comes to um, just the classes, the school, and everything. My husband was sharing with me about my mother-in-law. She went to nursing school to get her um, master's and her RN, and they kept failing her on her boards. And she was what? in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. She was in the restroom one day, and she was crying. That's what he told me about not passing. And a woman of a different race came in the bathroom with the same exact score she had, and they passed her and failed my mother-in-law. And she called them, and she had to, but you know, she was like going to sue them, I think, because that was discrimination. She had I to went to word up. So, it's just like it's trying to evolve, it's trying to change, but our work we can somewhat be, I would say, undervalued as what we can do to contribute. Like I think it's still like the men. Some men feel the more superior, and the woman to submit, and the woman should be this way. When it comes to an authority, and we have less, you know, so that's just kind of what I look at. Like, think about this in the churches. Yeah, you have the the you know the man over the household, and you have the wife, and the wife must do this. But women in certain places, certain religion or churches, they're not allowed to speak on the pulpit. They're not allowed to do this. They're not allowed to do that because it's their role, their look to do this. Well, women can be more than just sitting with a pretty dress and a pretty skirt. You know what I'm saying? For real. But times are changing, so they either get it. Look, they're going to have to jump in a bad way soon because women are taking their power and they force back really? storm. <laughs> For real. Where I'm from, we're starting to get like <clears throat> in the black churches, we're starting to get a lot more female preachers. For real, they're doing their thing. Mm-hmm. They is not stopping. They not coming down from up there. It ain't, it ain't took them this long. They not yeah. coming down. You yeah. better get with the program. Yeah, you <clears> see <throat> more women as pastors. See more women in politician leagues. You see more women fighting roles. You see women just doing what people say women shouldn't do. Shout out to homegirl too. What's her name? Um, politics. What's her name? Camilla. So, <laughs> shout out her. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care if she doing good or bad. She she trying. Mm-hmm. She she won the first. Promise yeah. you that. Like only person who been this close to it is Consadola. Consadella. Yeah. No, she doing sure. her thing. Yeah. And we I we can't be mad at her as a black community because she the only one. Yeah. She testing the waters out for her. So even if she do bad, she still did her thing. Like. And the sad, and the sad thing is, she gets scrutiny for every small thing. Because she's oh, yeah. a woman, if she was a white woman, she wouldn't get half the scrutiny that they, you know, do that. But you know what? She gonna she gonna represent us, and I believe she gonna do a good job. I, I'm excited for him. I don't care who, if she was running with a different candidate or running or wasn't running against Trump. That's big for people to yeah. to stand behind you, being a woman, and and to endorse. Shout out, yeah, and she an AKA yeah. my sister's an AKA, so my sister really love it. What? That's what's up. That's what's up. Dang, those those the uh, I'm not I'm I mean I'm not no Greek person, but those they say those are pretty girls. That's what they say. The AKAs. I think so. I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, 
Oh, their colors are pink and green. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, those are pretty good. You see the AK? Mm, if you ain't on your game, you better just turn your head. Mm. For real, they don't play. Mm. <clears throat> they about straight, what's it called? Uh, how you pre- presentation, how you present yourself. You better yeah. come correct. Mm-hmm. Don't come looking like me, dog. They gonna turn you down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For real. All right, so boom. <clears throat> Miss Tanya, my next question is, the first question, the last question I just asked you was, what do you feel, how do you feel women are represented in the world? My next question is, what needs to be changed for women to get more power? Women need more of a platform to be heard and people to sit and want to hear what, what they have to say and genuinely receive it. Straight up. Personally. That's it. An open platform. Yes, ma'am. With open ears. All right, so <clears throat> we're, almost toward, we're almost at the end of this interview. My next three questions are going to be for the African, well, for the African community. Any person who came from Africa of color, you know, matter of fact, whatever, whatever. The mm. first question is: Do you believe police brutality is real, or do you think it's made up? It's definitely real. It's definitely real. And this, the the honest thing is, it's been around for so long. The only thing that caught up with it is technology. And uh, being able to record it. Because just imagine what people would be doing if it wasn't there. Now, I do believe you. sometimes you have to use force. And I do believe that stuff has to be done to contain somebody. But if you look at it, the only people that are being beat are black people. I'm sorry. Yeah, you have some. Every race is, is getting, I ain't going to say just black. There's different races that are still having their moments with cops. I don't think all cops are bad, but I definitely believe police, police brutality is definitely real. Absolutely. Definitely real. <clears throat> um, have you personally, or do you know anybody who has had a negative encounter, encounters with the police? Yeah, I, I've never had one. Um, I've had like a little, a little minor uh, police to say something to you or you know, make little comments and stuff like that. I, I remember um, in high school, we were put over by a cop, and they was they was taunting us. They wasn't trying to pull us over for, uh, we were in a nice car. I was 16 and 17, and the guy was with, he had a really, really nice car. His family was pretty well off, and they looked like, okay, those kids in the car, and there's a nice um, car, let's pull them over. And they were taunting us about the ear, like ears, the pictures on our IDs. It wasn't, it was just, it was a mess. It was just abuse of power. But um, I've never had to personally not thank God for they have to deal with it. But I've seen tons of people get, uh, you know, in a headlock and different stuff like that. You know, just all around. But I've never had to deal with it personally on my own. Just a little small minor stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so now my next question is regarding black on black crime. Now, with this being said, I'm not talking about the negative part of it. I'm talking about my question is what is your message to help uplift our brothers and our sisters who are committing these black on black crimes? Like, to First, get them to stop, you know? Um, as long as we continue to do black on black crime. And you know what? Well, let me go back and say this: the white man, or and I say white man, I say the bigger man. We're doing the job for them. You doing what they want us to do, and we can't sit there and scream "Black Lives Matter." And I try to say this, and I'm gonna say this, and be mindful of how I say it. We can't scream. Take your time. Well, yeah. Make, we can't scream time. "Black Lives Matter" if it don't matter to each other so we can't fight you can't walk hand in hand and say you fight or protesting for justice and equality when you turn around turn around with that same hand you hold the fist up with in that same voice and take the life of your brother or your sister next door so until we learn to matter to each other we won't matter to nobody else that's just in all honesty yes ma'am <clears throat> 
my next question is, what is your message for all the black women around the world? Be greater than what the world portrays us to be. An angry, bitter woman. Um, a woman that just want a whole bunch of kids. A woman who um, who's unsure of herself. That's, that's what they're trying to portray the black women as. Um, a stereotype. And when we show them that we are gentle and that we are loving and we are passionate and we're not angry and we're not broken and that we don't come from broken families or that we, if we went through a broken situation that we are not defined by what we went through, we can be so much greater and we can be able to teach that son, that brother, that cousin, that neighbor, we can be a reflection or a light to them. We can, you know, be an example. Like we can and we have, a, I feel like women have a great impact. Like men have a great impact on men, but women can tend to have a great impact on men as well as women. And it, it starts with us. It, it really do. Think about it. You have a son. You don't pour it to him. You 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 tell him he's not going to be anything. You attack him. Uh, you may beat him or you whoop him or you just make him feel invalued. Then he go into the streets and he's angry. He don't feel love. And that's where the acting out come from. And he accept validation from those friends. And then he's groomed to be this person that the jail is ready to put behind. So just think when you nurture that daughter, you nurture that son, you nurture that cousin. Just think how much further it will get along. But when we are defined by that bitter black woman and angry and messed up, we just be better than what people define us as, as a black woman. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> my, this is my last question of the night. Um, what would you do if you were the president? Ooh, Tony. <laughs> oh man, I definitely okay. So, first and foremost, um, I hear so much, and, and I love. Obama, you know, but I hear so many people talk about how as Obama, Obama being in president, yeah, he was the first black, but he didn't address the black issues. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hear so many different people on so many different platforms say that. And for me, um, being a president, I will make sure with my voice um, a lot of things for the black community and what as far as like money, power, and things that we don't get to have would definitely be addressed it on. Man, I I would definitely most likely be there to make sure my black people, my descendants, my people can get ahead and get some type of exchange of power, get some type of more doors to be opened up, more jobs, more things in the housing as far as school. Um, foreign policy, I would Definitely, man. I, I, you got me kind of stuck right there. You could take your time. Take your time. Shh. It's so much that need to be done. I I will be implemented like 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 I love what Michelle Obama did when she did the the healthy initiatives for kids in school because you see obesity is at all time high with our kids, health issues. So, and, oh, you know, another thing that I would definitely do. Now, you know, you can't control what the mayor or what the governor do, but if you think about the black communities and you look gold into a white community, you don't see payday loans. You don't see liquor stores on every corner. You don't see unhealthy fast foods. You don't see burnt down buildings just left there for 20, 30 years. I would definitely put more into making sure more money is in those communities, more of these um I would, I would definitely have a hand on making sure black people get almost just the same, if not equal, advantage with those um, subdivisions and, you know, what I'm trying to say without saying. Absolutely. Um, it, yeah, because the schooling is so much different. Um, just, you can drive the highways, just everything about this side where people who have a little bit more money or the black side have. Um, when it comes to businesses, I will, those grants, those monies that, like, it's a lot of black owned businesses that are great and will flourish if they had the support. And I was telling my husband, 
if you think about it, our best businesses are in the city, in the hood, right? But you almost don't want to drive down there because of crime. You know what I'm saying? Or because it's either too far. But we don't get the opportunity to say, I'm going to apply for a business in this area but because you're denied. They don't want your kind over here or they're going to raise it so high where you don't even have an opportunity to come to this area to come out here. So it's just like on so many levels. Um, I would want to have a hand in everything from food, from a community, from jobs, to schooling, to foreign affairs, to a little bit of everything. Uh, I can't really hit the ham on the hill right now, but I would, I would be a little little bit of everything. Like, honestly, a little bit of everything. It sounds like you were the president, you wanted your full eight years. Uh, The full eight, because it's a lot, it's a lot that needs to be knocked over with a straight bulldozer and restart it. Yeah. A lot. I see a lot of people um, get ice cubes, getting a lot of heat for working with the Trump administration. And I don't think it's more so working with the Trump administration. He is more so trying to have a voice for black people. And I think I, I commend him for it. Because I'm not going to say he a sellout. I won't definitely. But the thing is, somebody had to sit with Hitler. Somebody had to sit with all those presidents, Martin Luther King had to sit with the white man for the black people to be here. Like, what if nobody done that? Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Supreme Court women, when we didn't have rights, somebody had to go sit in front of those same people that didn't want to give us rights to, to, to be here. How can you get something done if you don't want to go sit in front of the exact same people where change needs to be taking place? I commend yeah. you. The change, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, regardless of how the president is or someone else, how can we say the person is a sellout because they're trying to they're trying to get change for us? And that is where we need to take off those invisible blind, blindfolds and open our eyes up to see the bigger picture. Like, it's, it's so much bigger than that. Like, you get somebody in position to help you in... Everything they do, you depicts of it. The, the, to me, I think the best thing right now for a lot of celebrities to jump on the bad wagon, and that's that's the only people we have to hear us is our people, black. They got the money that can go say this is what the community needs. They, they know, they have family members that are still in the hood that are still coming up. You may not have what they have, but I definitely it, it, it it's a lot that need to be done. And I commend anybody who wants to sit in front of a president that we have or the Supreme Court or judges who they they need to be they need to they need to hear. Straight up. Um <clears throat> I agree with that all the way. All the way. Um, Miss Tanya, that's all the questions I have for you tonight. I um, really do appreciate this interview. It means a whole lot to me. Even at three, four o'clock in the morning. Oh, it's no problem. No problem, and I got you uh, tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to message you first to see what your time looking like, because I know you're studying in school, so we can set up an interview with Toya, with Ashley. Um, I got you. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to get you um, some more coming on, and I'm going to keep this app on my phone, so um, all we got to do is just hit. Just go on yours. Right yeah, they can just come right on my ass. As soon as you tighten no two twenty, it's popping right up on there. Oh, well, I'm just going to go to your link. From IG, yeah, yeah. but it should already be saved in there because we're on here now. Mm-hmm. But I got you. Um, is there anything that I didn't ask you or anything that you didn't talk about that you would like to discuss? Oh, no, we're good because you know, before yeah. we record it, we, we got a whole lot out the way, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I thank you also. Um, excuse me, yeah, we, we, we're good with everything. Um, I'm going to ask you this after we finish this because you message me all the links that you'd like me to put in my description. Okay. To your channel. Okay. So um, that's all I got for you, Miss Tanya. I appreciate it. Oh, no I problem. Okay, it. well, I'll see you soon, and, you know, we'll, we'll do this again. I got you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You again. get you some sleep. 